unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word.
God open every door that has been shut on you before. In Jesus' mighty name. 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 Sometimes when a child is in the womb, they think that's the only world. Until they come out. <laughs> Praise God. And then they realize that they were supposed to walk. They had hands that were supposed to feed. They had eyes that were supposed to see. But then they were not useful. And that child felt like they were perfect. <laughs> they were okay. Am I making sense? But then the time comes when you come out of that world and realize I need to walk. Some of you are getting to that realization. There's another world. In Jesus' mighty name. Who remembers what we preached last week? Put up your hands. Put up your hands. If you remember, who was here last week? You remember? I, I promised that I was going to continue in that aspect. Amen. And I remember telling us that today I'm trying to make a continuation of probably we should have been a three part series but I don't think I'll have the time for a third part. But in future someday I'll drop it. Praise the Lord. I never forget instruction. It always stays in my head. Somebody say Amen. So last week I started something and I remember sharing from the perspective of their people who say, me, I have fasted, I have prayed, I have given, I have done everything right, but I'm not what? I'm not moving as I should. Am I making sense? I'm not moving as I should. Some people, they do things, they try every way they can, and they feel like they don't get the results that they expect, the results that they feel they need as individuals. Praise the Lord. And then it brings a certain frustration in your soul. Say, God, why is it that I'm not getting what I feel I'm supposed to be getting? Because I know too much. I, have, I listen to the word. I read the devotionals. I tune in in the Q&As. My God, I buy the CDs, but I'm not seeing what? Results. What's wrong with me? I went to apostle this, and then I went to prophet this. Then I went to evangelist so, and pastor, teacher, preacher so. I even went to somebody who is all in one. <laughs> you know, if we were supposed to be losing hair for laying hands on us, some of you, you'd be bold. <laughs> and that people have prayed. Hallelujah. But you don't see what? Results. Results. You don't see results. So last week I talked about the mouth, okay? If you didn't listen to that, someone get it. You need it for yourself. Today I need to share another perspective of it. 
Proverbs 25 verses 28. Proverbs 25 verses 28. Are we there? Let's read one thing. Let's go. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. Read it again. He's like a city that is broken down and without walls. Read it one more time. Over his spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Did you hear that? The Bible says that if you don't have control over your spirit, you're like a city without walls that is what? Broken down. And so, you tell me, a city without walls and is broken down, what happens to it? What happens to it? It's plundered. It's attacked, isn't it? That means that it is exposed to attacks. I don't know whether I'm making sense. If you're talking about a city without walls, in the olden culture, city had, cities had to have walls. They had to have gates. They had to have uh, hedges on top of the walls. Praise the Lord. When the walls are broken, the city is plundered. When the Lord gave Joshua Jericho, the children of Israel, He gave him Jericho. The Bible says, I give you the kings, the princes, and everyone therein. It means that when the walls of that city were broken, they owned everything in that city. They didn't use physical power, no. They used spiritual power. And the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, I have given thee in thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Why? Because the walls were broken. When the walls are broken, you're possessed. Can I say it again? When the walls are broken, you're what? You're possessed. You stop being your own. You start to move under a certain influence, a certain power. You start to be controlled by something that, that you don't want to control you, or it's not even meant to control you, but it can even give you a certain peace. <laughs> by the way, don't think that every man who was walking in Egypt was sad. You remember when they leave Egypt and then they go to the wilderness? The Bible says, they say, we miss the meat. We miss the cucumber and the melons we used to eat. They wanted to go back. You know, the wilderness was a, a worse place than the war in Egypt. It doesn't mean that they were not in a better place being in the wilderness. But there comes a time when a man does not even know the price of freedom. Praise God. There comes a time when a man doesn't know the price of freedom. He would have gone back to enjoy the comfort of Egypt. Because he thought it was the place they ought to be. Why? Because they've lived there for so long. And there was meat too. Hallelujah. Somebody say Amen. amen. Now, when I speak about a situation where a man knoweth not how to rule his spirit, the word there for ruling is controlling, it means that if you don't know how to control your spirit, if you don't know how to control it, you're exposed to any kind of attack. It doesn't matter how much you pray, it doesn't matter how much you fast, it doesn't matter how much you do whatever you want to do. Do everything in this world. Some of you have prayed more than others, but you still don't have results. Some of you have walked miles. You've done everything in your body to see that you really serve God. Even God can see that this woman has served. But you don't have what? Sounds. Because many or many Christians don't understand how serious it is to control their own spirit. The day you lose the control over your spirit, you're in trouble. You're like a city without walls and you're broken down. Anything that is sent your way, it doesn't matter how much you pray, you're in trouble. It will attack you. That is why the Bible says that the servant of God must not strive. But in all things, he must instruct them that oppose themselves if by adventure. The Bible says they will give, they will receive repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And the Bible says that they may recover themselves from the snares of the devil, of which are taken captive by his own will or at his own will. Some people, the devil just takes them when he wants. If he wants to kill them now, he doesn't even waste time. He just kills them. That's what they call living on the devil's mercy. <laughs> because 
he takes them captive at his own will. Why? Every time he wants to come to them, he finds them a city that is broken down and without walls. I don't know if I'm making sense. Every time the devil wants to attack them, he finds them as a city that is without walls. It's broken. He can take anything he wants from them. He can plunder anything he wants from them. They can wake up tomorrow morning and they have nothing with them. So it's, it's at his choice. It's not even on your prayers. Why? Because the Bible says they oppose themselves. They set themselves against truth. When you set yourself against truth, it doesn't matter how much you pray or fast. Some people even do it without knowing. And that's what the challenge is. Many Christians do it even without knowing that it's happening. And so that's why I want to teach in this direction. To teach you to rule your spirit. Because once you rule your spirit, everything is sorted. The Bible says that the spirit of a man will sustain his what? His infirmity. The word there is weakness, sickness, affliction, attack. That means that God has created a certain ability of, of your spirit to have the ability to withstand anything. You're not going to die of cancer because cancer is a killer or because it's stage 4. You're going to die of cancer if you don't know how to rule your spirit. I don't know if I'm making sense. You, know, but you don't die of disease because disease is stronger. No. You die because you don't know how to control your spirit. You don't know how to rule it. So do you realize then that everything that happens in your life is as a result of the state of your spirit? Because when he says that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, it will uphold his infirmity. But he says, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? The word there for bearing means who can help? You can't help a man with a wounded spirit. You can't. You can preach all you want, but until the spirit heals, you're wasting time. A man can be sick in his body, but that man will never be healed in his body until his spirit is healed. A man can suffer financially, but that man can never come out of financial trouble until his spirit is healed. And you know, today we are doing it the other way around. We are trying to heal the outside with the issues inside. No, we are not called to heal the outside with the issues inside. Giving you capital is not going to make you richer. No, but giving you a healthy spirit gives you the guarantee that you are going to be rich, whether you want it or not. What God is looking for is not a fat bank account. No, what God is looking for is a healthy spirit. It's a healthy spirit. So when the Bible says a wounded spirit, who can support? It means, God is saying, there is nobody who can help a wounded soul. Go to the best doctor in the world, they will not heal you. Go to the most anointed apostle, pastor, bishop, evangelist, prophet in the world, they will not fix you. Why? Because the problem is not the circumstances you're going through. The problem is not the job. The problem is not the marital issues. The problem is not your child. The problem is not the drug addiction. The problem is not the weakness. No, the problem is your spirit. If your spirit is not healed, you're wasting time. You're wasting time. That's why some people don't need deliverance service. They need teaching. There is no prayer that heals a wounded spirit. It's not there. He said nobody can help that kind of spirit. Only the word of God. Why? Because it cuts asunder, separates the bone and marrow, exposes your heart and thoughts what they really are. You are a total sum of the state of your spirit. Don't be deceived. It doesn't matter how much you think you believe. It doesn't matter how much faith you think you carry. You are a total sum of the state of your spirit. If you want to know a sick spirit, look at the man outside. Look at the man outside. Look at the one outside. Look at the man outside. Look at the man outside. So now the devil knows that he can not attack your finances, but he can wound your spirit. And then you pray against the attacks of your finances because you think the attacks are on your finances. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Some people think, oh, I refuse that spirit that is attacking. No, the problem is not their finances. The problem is not even your body. No, the problem is your spirit. 
The devil knows that if he can switch the state of your heart and make it think or act a certain way, he has you where he wants you. He has you where he wants you. He has you where he wants you. No man in this world is afflicted without going astray. No man. And I want you to learn that. And that makes you 100% responsible for your next years in life. You can blame your auntie, that uncle of yours, you could have been successful, that cousin, no. The man says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. The only problem is that many people don't know when they go astray. They think that, and it's a problem when you think that certain people are responsible for your failure. Let me tell you something. If certain people are responsible for your failure, then there are also people who are going to be responsible for your success. And that is irresponsibility. That is irresponsibility. You cannot fail because your father was poor. No, you can't fail because your mother was broke. You can't fail because some auntie of yours said that you say that when I was young that she put some things in the food and then you ate it and that's why you're like this. Oh, I'm this because they called me Jacob. Meet God, you'll change your name. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Responsibility is the understanding primarily that no man is in charge of your future. Only yourself. They can do things around you. But the Bible says it's not anything without that defileth a man, but that which cometh from within. Nothing from without can defile a man. 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 Can defile a man. You cannot get flu because you sat next to somebody with flu. But you can get flu when you believe that that flu can catch you. That's what the Bible says. He says, for there is nothing from without a man entering him can defile him. Nothing. Oh, let me insult some doctors. I hear you have to eat healthy not to get cancer. Eat all you want. If you have cancer in your spirit, it doesn't matter how good you eat, you're going to die. I've seen men who eat greens and they die of cancer. And I've seen men who eat meat and they're still 90. What are you talking about? Take your coke and have healthy bones in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says nothing from with... Oh, Reba Kande, Lobo, Zibe, Tete, Leba, Kaya. Oh, pop, pop, pop makes people sick. Oh, meat makes people... Sick. No, 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 no. The problem is you. The, the fact that you say it is the problem. It's not the pork. I said it's not the pork. It's not that meat. Oh no, but you have to put wisdom. Which wisdom is above God's wisdom? See, the Bible says that that wisdom you're bringing is of this world and it will be brought to nothing. You're going to eat right and still die a bad death. Why? Because it's not about what enters you. No. He says it is what comes out of that man. It is what comes out of that man. You find a Christian sitting next to somebody's flu and say, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go away, you have flu. Oh, oh. Me, when somebody says this, I tell them, I don't get flu. I don't get flu. I don't get flu. You remember the time when a plague hit South Africa and the great man John Gilex was carrying dead bodies with his bare hands. And the doctors, when he approaches them, they were running away because they didn't want to catch it. And they asked this guy, how do you go touch the bodies? And I told them, I have the life. Which is of God. <laughs> In me. I'm trying to help you. You see, there are certain things that don't work with us. They work with other people. Passive smoking. Smile when you sit next to somebody who is smoking. You're going to get it. So don't sit. You see, don't. If you believe it inside that you're going to catch it. A man sits in a taxi. He has a wife at home. Are you hearing me? He has a wife at home. He is a chain smoker. And that man gets tuberculosis. And his wife at home doesn't get it. And then he coughs once in a taxi. And you get it. Tell your neighbor they're not talking about me. 
Tell them that when they're talking about it, come. I refuse to be that way. I refuse to be that way. So, what kept the wife? Good genes? Blood group? Oh. Then you realize any gene can catch tuberculosis. Any blood group can catch tuberculosis. But there is a blood group. It's called... It's called Z. Zion. <laughs> I know many people fear to hear these things. Because you have too, been too careful for your life. You've been too careful for your life. Listen, the message Bible is even clear. When you start to care, you start to die. The moment you start to overcare, you start to die. He that keepeth his life, I promise you, will lose it. You keep it. Continue keeping it. I have to be like this. If I, if I have to, you know, you have to put wisdom. What do you mean by wisdom? Thank you. <laughs> Self help is what? No help at all. This is what the Bible says. Self sacrifice is the way. My way to find yourself, your true self. Sacrifice yourself. Give yourself wholly to God. Don't try to help yourself. That is why many of us don't fall sick, because we understood it. What makes you sick is not what comes out. From out, no. It's what is inside your spirit. Rule your spirit. Tell your neighbor, rule your spirit. Rule your spirit. One time I sat next to somebody with a very bad flu. They sneezed. Oh, so, uh, uh, something in me said, At first I first imagined myself having it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I went to God. I said, I repent. <laughs> How can I even think such a thought? Yeah, I can have flu. Then the next day, I woke up and I said to feel something here. <laughs> the next day, I said to feel something here. Like this. Oh boy, I locked my door. Boah! And I told flu, sit down. And you know me, that's what I do. As a man thinking. That's what I do. I gave it a seat. And I opened the Bible for it and I told him, you see, <laughs> greater is he. You see, if, if you don't learn to be a bit crazy, a bit crazy, you will die very early. May I notice? I notice if you're not crazy in the word, you're going to die early. You will die before your time. You have to be. You remember the time of the one man of God, Smith, who goes on? He had what were they called? What stones? He had kidney stones. And the doctors told him, You're going to. They are going to operate him. <laughs> he asked them, what, what, what did you say? He told him, You're going to operate him. He told him, I would rather die believing <laughs> than live doubting. <laughs> Six years kidney stones were coming out of him until the devil said, Let me just leave the man. You have to get to a point eh? where situations are the ones which say, No, let me just leave this guy. He's different. He's different. I touched the wrong person. Somebody say they touched the wrong person. <laughs> you have to learn to rule your spirit. When they just tell you, Oh, you have this. Oh, my children gather. <laughs> One time I was reading the scripture, I think it was Moses, where the Bible says that even in his old age, he was as healthy as his youth. Ah! <laughs> he said what? The Bible says that he was as fit as he was in his youth. In his old age, the guy was like as he, <laughs> like he was. He didn't die of Musmania what? No, no, no. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyesight was sharp. He still walked with a spring in his head. So you're never not talking about me. Ah! One twenty, one thirty, one forty. Hey, that boy have a cut ear. Boy, what time is it? Okay, cut ear. Masasi de. Some of you are starting to grow old early. You're twenty-five, but there's a way you're walking. Even the way you praise God. They call people 
people for youth conferences, you don't go. I feel sorry for you. Even when you're 60 and they say there's a youth conference, go. <laughs> That's a man of faith. That is a man of faith. And that is why I decree at the sound of my voice. You're going to live long. You're going to be healthy. In the name of Jesus. And your eyesight will be sharp. No Alzheimer's. No paranoia. Smart. Many of you are decree they are going to stop, they are going to fail to tell your age. <laughs> I know why women are screaming. <laughs> They love their age. <laughs> but that's the truth. When I read that, I realized that wrinkles is unbelief. Amplified. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amplified. Give me the amplified. Yes. Natural force are better. Praise the Lord. Now. This is what I think. That when scientists say that they are developing what they call anti wrinkle, what do they call it? <laughs> huh? Now, there's somebody who's saying, I don't know was that Ari Kadi Waburunzi. And Ya Kadi Wanan Ya Kadi Waburunzi. Those things of your face not fitting you, I refuse it. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I'm going to walk strong. Until I die, I will be strong. But it's up to you. It's up to what? To you. And you're going to walk straight. 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 Praise the Lord. You're not going to attribute it to your genes. Because, listen, I saw this thing, and unless you want to go home early, there are people who can get fed and they say, Me, let me go to heaven. But you see, I got this thing. I realized when the Bible says that one day in the house of the Lord is like a thousand in the world, I realized that by the time a man lives for 900 years, what you were calling a thousand days for him was one day. So his body started to grow on the calendar of heaven. One day in the house of the Lord is like a thousand in the world. You understand? And that means that if a man lives a thousand days in the world, for you it is one day, if you're in the presence of God. You understand? That is for every 2.7 years a man lives, for you it is one day. So by the time, okay, you begin from the day you became born again. <laughs> Okay, from the time, from that time on, or from the time when you start to understand what the presence of God does, you start to realize that that's the thing that keeps, so instead of buying anti wrinkle creams, eh? praise the Lord. The Bible says that he grew so old, but he was healthy, and his natural force was not abated. His body, every part of him was straight. The natural force was not aborted, just abated, sorry, not just every part of him, every part of him was perfect. Every part. Praise the Lord. Every part of him. And me, that's what I believe in my life. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen. But you see, we go back to the issue. He says that when your spirit, when your spirit is controlled, and then you start to create what you feel you must walk like or into. It's only a matter of time. Everything outside starts to work. Even men who are not born again know it. It's not a mystery for the men which are what? Not born again. You look at the self-help books of the world. They say positive thinking. What, what, what? Was when you think it, you become it. They are copying the Bible. The only difference is that they are men who are not in this life of the spirit. 
But they are claiming those scriptures and they work for them. How much more the man of the spirit? Ask your neighbor, how much more the man of the spirit? So if the Bible says Moses, a man under the law. You understand? If that kind of man, his natural force could not be abetted. Anything natural about him, whether you're talking about blood cells, whether you're talking about skin, whether you're talking about bones, whether you're talking about eyes, nothing about him was... It's, it's more than just walking. Eh? It's everything about him. His whole natural life was not abetted. He was walking right. Anything that defines nature on Moses was not destroyed. It was not derailed. It did look funny. You understand what I'm trying to say? He was a man relating with God. He was not like you. Who carries the Holy Ghost in the inside of you? But the Bible says that his natural force was not what? Happened. Nothing about him. So, just even the whole line of you thinking, he wasn't just walking right. Everything around him was perfect. Now, I imagine a man who is 120 years and he looked like a 32 year old. And he said, Then, Ogola and Imukuru. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When I saw that, I said, What? 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 How can I die funny? I'm trying to convince somebody who is not convinced. Okay, don't worry. When the Bible says God will restore the earth, it means He can rewind your, those, your wrinkles and put back your body. I mean, with God, all things are possible. Somebody say amen. But you see, so the devil knows that if I can work with her spirit and I kill it, it doesn't matter what happens around her. It's only a matter of time. She will die also. She will die also. She will die also. She will die also. So, why do you think that the attack is on your, your life? Simanya, eh? Some of you call it what? There is an attack on my books. That's nothing. Because whether you read books or you didn't, you're going to go to heaven. I'm not the one who read is a success. Those, those, who, those who read can fail and those who pass also die. You know? they, there is no glory. I'm not saying don't go to school. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I studied. I, I have, I have my, my books. I'm only saying that there is something in this life deeper than any books you can ever read. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. So, now, I want to show you something. I just want to show you like two or three things. Eh? Or something. One, even if it's one for the time that I have, just to open your eyes to something very important. The heart, for example, the state of your heart, your spirit. Let's just use the word spirit. Same as the heart. They said, for example, the Bible says, let me show you some Proverbs. <clears throat> Proverbs, I think it's in um, 15. Let me just give you an example. Proverbs 15. See that? Verses 13. Now the Bible says that a merry heart, huh? just being happy, okay? that you don't have a job, now you're not speaking in tongues, now you're not praying on Saturday. But the Bible says, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Now you say, okay, a broken spirit who shall bear? How are spirits broken? When the heart is what? Sorrowed. Are you seeing that? So the devil knows that as long as you're happy, eh, there is nothing he can take away from you. But what can he do? He can create a certain situation, a small issue. And then it changes your heart. And then your heart stops to be what? Happy. And once you lose that joy, the Bible says, the sorrow comes into your spirit. And once that sorrow hits you, the Bible says, your spirit breaks. Are you hearing me? Your spirit what? Breaks. And somebody says, but, but you see, there are situations, even me, I don't force them to come. But they come and they make me sad. It's true. Those situations can come. But you have the responsibility to control your spirit. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, she can be annoying. He can be annoying. It's true. But you have the responsibility to respond with a sense of your spirit. Because he knows, the devil knows the moment he makes you sorrowful, you're in trouble. The moment your heart, you know, many of you will say, 
you, some people, you know we were deceived for so many years, and I'm going to correct that. People used to think that when you cry a lot before God, that's when He says, okay, okay, I've forgiven you. They, <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm going to help you. Okay, don't cry, don't cry. Okay, right, hush, 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 don't worry. So, okay, okay, you help her. Archangel Michael, do something. <laughs> She's over crying. And then somebody one time quoted the scripture of a wicked judge. <laughs> and then they say there's a wicked judge. A woman used to bring her case to God, every, to that judge every day, every day, every day. Until the judge got tired and said, okay, let me judge your matter. But you see, some people think that Jesus is a wicked judge. They think he's also wicked. Listen, it's not. Jesus is not a wicked judge. He just doesn't want you to come and make us go help. Then you cry every time until so that you call on him until he hears you. You're not shouting. Shout louder. Some of you think that there's a glory in crying. You even misinterpret scriptures are broken and contrite spirit. You shall not ignore. No, he's not talking about you breaking in ignorance. That kind of broken and contrite is yielding to him. He's not talking about you breaking yourself and then you become sorrowful and then you come to him like this. And he's like, <laughs> you see, in, in Luganda we have something called the church. I don't even know what they call it in English. Who has an English word? Chejo. Eh? Chejo. Eh? Tantrum. Tantrum is, is different. You remember those kids who have children? Eh? Those kids who cry for nothing. They throw tantrum for nothing. They just be there and then they throw their, themselves down. I've seen... <laughs> that girl was watching television and the kid came and she was okay. Then the mother saw her. Then she threw herself down. I said, ah, I thank God I'm an African. Those things... You... <laughs> <laughs> you do those things with my mom, you fall. <laughs> she does her business. Something like that with God, they throw themselves down. They think it's broken and contriteness. It's not. It's not. It's actually annoying. If it annoys me, even God, it annoys him, I'm sure. He'll be spoiling you to pick you up in ignorance. See, God doesn't reward ignorance. It doesn't matter how sorrowful you are. God does not reward ignorance. He sent his word. Read it. Some of you think because you're overcrying, he's going to hear. Okay, you call. You call. If you're talking about calling, the people have called God more than you have, but they still don't have results. And the people who have just smiled through. <laughs> Learn to pass through situations smiling. Tell your neighbor, learn to have a merry heart by force. Tell him, learn to have a merry heart by force. You have to force yourself. Just force yourself to be happy. When, listen, in this world, the biggest mistake you can ever do is to... to to think that your happiness is going to come from outside. The day you start thinking that way, people will stress you. Oh. You have to get to a point where nobody is responsible for your joy. Nobody. You have to get to a point where it, it's not what he did that makes you happy that way or what. No, no, whether she did what or what. Your happiness is entirely Christ. It's entirely Christ. He has done enough in your life. Enough. 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 Some of you think that spiritual warfare is putting your head down and saying, Rakaya. No, that's not spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is smiling in the storm. You look at it and you're comfortable. This guy, don't you care that we are dying? He told them, you guys. Full of unbelief. Why did you even wake me up? I mean, the Son of God is in the middle of a boat. And that is the time he feels he has to sleep. He doesn't sleep when the, 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 the seas come, no. And, the sea, and, and, and this, is, this is the thing about it when this thing starts to form in your spirit. You don't force it. No. Jesus, the Bible didn't say he acted to be asleep. No. The Bible says he was. And for real, he was. 
There was a confidence in his spirit that had to cause him to sleep. When, hey, hey, hey. I'm not saying force yourself to sleep. No, I'm saying, I'm saying convince your spirit to a level where you find yourself sleeping. Somebody say, don't you care? Don't you care? Don't you care? You look around. People are going through this. Uh, situations are happening. You look like you're asleep. You're seriously asleep. Man, in that position, you start to look like you're stupid. You start to look you're stupid. But you see, every man has their level of faith. Tell your neighbor, I have my level of faith. I believe. I'm a believer. Hey, I'm a believer. Say it. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I am a believer. Some people might not understand what it means. Do you know that somebody can get annoyed when you have peace? It can annoy. I noticed some people. One time, I think it was in something like Second Chronicles fifteen fifteen. The Bible speaks of a situation where God sent promises, and the nation just smiled. Give me the message. They, they, they just smiled with their heart. They received. He said, the whole country felt good about the covenant promise. God sent them a covenant. They, felt, they just caused a certain feeling in their spirit. They said, you know that good feeling? Eh? It doesn't mean that everything around you works right. No. They were in captivity. They were coming out of war. Situations, circumstances were not working right. But the Bible says, the whole country, the whole country felt good about the covenant promise. They had given their promise joyfully. From the heart, they had given their promise joyfully from the heart. Their heart was joyful, and, and the Bible says, "Anticipating what? Answer me, anticipating what?" And the Bible says, "They what? They sought God, and He what? What did He do? Because He shows up on men who are happy. Remember the day the man of God casts his face down and thinks Joseph is dead. The Bible says God never spoke to him again until." He had that Joseph is alive. When his countenance went down, God never spoke to Jacob again. The next time in the scriptures God speaks to that man is when he, the Bible says he sees the what? The horses and the horsemen and everything. And the Bible says the spirit of their father revived. And Israel said, you understand? In the next chapter, he starts prophesying on his children. He starts to hear God again. From the day his countenance fell, believing that his son had died, God never spoke to him again. He never. It's not anywhere in the scriptures that he spoke to Jacob ever again. So when the Bible says, let's go back to the scriptures where we're at in the message. So the Bible says that they, they received, they felt good about the covenant promise they had given that. They are promised joyfully from the heart, anticipating the best. They had so God and he what? He showed up, ready to what? To be found. And God gave them peace within and without. A most peaceable kingdom. God showed up and gave them peace. He just showed up and cooled them down. That is why if you read the scriptures, when Jesus moves out, he realizes he's talking to non-believers. He comes to the sea. Okay? In the New Testament, when he gets in and they're all scared, you remember the scriptures when they were out and they, were, they had surrounded them to kill them? When he entered the house of the believers, he told them, you have peace. He didn't go to the guys outside. Because now he was talking to new creatures. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. When the wind was boisterous and things, the waves were moving at the sea, Jesus sleeping, when he wakes up, he has to come the what? The sea, because he's dealing with men who don't have faith. They are not believers. They don't. They are not born again. They don't carry the life which is of God. In a similar situation, they are surrounded by people who want to kill them, and they lock themselves up in fear. And then when he appears to them, he doesn't go out to fight their battles. He tells them, "No, the problem is not what is outside. The problem is what is inside. You have peace." It's not what they say. No, 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 no. He, he told them, you have peace. The problem is you. You so just, don't, wa- don't worry what's outside, what people are saying. No, we are. no, no, no. You have peace because the problem now is you. If I can settle you, nothing outside can kill you. Nothing. Nothing. 
So tell me instead of losing appetite because of what is happening outside, you sort your spirit. Sort your spirit. Some of it might be even words. Words, simple words. Somebody spoke about you that you're a thief. <laughs> Listen, gossip, eh? Proverbs 18, eh? it says that a tailbearer, a gossiper, somebody who speaks, eh? the Bible says, he, they are wounds. It says the words of a tailbearer are as wounds, and they what? They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. The word there for innermost parts of the belly is the spirit. Gossip attacks your spirit, not your identity. You understand? So when people talk about you, oh, you're a thief. The devil wants to destabilize your spirit and make you lose direction. I love the way the message says it. Gossip is like eating cheap candy. Yeah. Do you really want that junk in your belly? Yeah, like, do you want to, to have junk, cheap candy? You see? <laughs> when you listen to those words, you're like eating cheap candy. It's like cheap candy. You, you, you're spoiling your belly inside, you see? But it goes beyond the point that I wanted to make. In, in, when you go back to the KJV mind, it says that the, these, these are wounds of a tail bearer and they go in the inward parts of the belly. They go into a man's spirit. Don't let words get into your spirit. Don't let them. You just don't let them. Okay, you are thief. Okay. They began to start a fire, but I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you didn't get it. Baganda said people who don't care are foolish. And the gospel is also foolish. Careless in the care of God. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Careless in the care of God. When, when you know God has your back, you don't need to worry. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, some of you, it's just the sadness of your spirit. What the devil wants to put you is, sometimes it's not what, the, what is happening. In, some of you, by the way, you have issues in your homes. You have issues at your workplace. You have situations that are so bad, you, you don't even know how to restore. You don't even know where to begin from. Yes, the problem is not those things. Put your spirit right. They'll take you back on that job. Even if they wrote that letter, termination letter, and you have it in your hand, and you refuse your spirit to lose that job. Believe me, tomorrow morning they will call you back. They will call you back. Why? Because it is your spirit that the devil is looking for. Many Christians don't understand that the world is not the things outside. The day you learn to shut out the voices from outside and listen to this guy inside, your life will start to change. That is why when that nation rejoiced, the Bible says the Lord gave them peace from within and without. You see, he had to begin with an inward experience. When he dealt with the within, the without was obvious. You understand what I'm saying? He says the peace within and without. It has to begin from inside. If, if God has to sort you, he has to first sort you. Then the circumstances, circumstances the situations around you start to follow. That means everything you see around you is a total sum of what's inside you. Whether you want it or not. Me, what did I do? I'm not the one. They bewitched me. It's inside you that they bewitched you. But I'm not the one who did it. And witchcraft, yes, is real. It's, it's inside you that you've given witchcraft reality. Why don't you understand? The moment you sort your heart inside and say, I'm not going to be this. It doesn't matter what men outside do. They are wasting time. That is why there are certain people who can look like they are losing it and they are going to the end. And then one day you see them bouncing back. And then, have you ever seen people who look so healthy and then they die? But the guy was breathing. Yesterday we played basketball together, then he died. And then there are people who are sick, but they are living. <laughs> when you have not killed your spirit, you can't die outside. You can't die outside. That's when I realized that this life of salvation is a choice. You choose how you want to live. Do you want to suffer? Begin from believing suffering. Admit it in your heart, out of the abundance of your heart. Your mouth will start speaking it. Before you know that, you're going to be the total sum. And some people don't even know when they're doing it. They, 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 they start like this. They say, Apostle, I have problems. That means you have admitted it in your heart. That's why the peace promised to the Christian 
passes all understanding. That is the peace promise. He didn't promise you a peace that can be explained. If you think your peace can be explained, then you're not yet born again. No. He speaks of the peace of God, which passes all understanding. What does it do? It keeps your heart and mind in Christ. He knows that if I, if I can lose your mind, if I can lose your mind and heart, there is nothing to it. It doesn't matter whether you're in the perfect circumstances and situations. Nothing will be fixed. Sometimes it's the words that are spoken. It's the things that are around you. The things, the negative things that you attract. The Bible says that those words dry up bones. The certain words that some of you, what is killing you right now is you live around parents who talk a certain way. I think we are going to die any time. Oh, electricity. I don't know whether this time I'll get money for your fees. That's why you're dying. How did their grandfathers do it? <laughs> Proverbs 15. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs 15, verse 30. He says, The light of the eyes does what? Rejoices the heart. And a good report maketh the bones. That means when a report that is negative comes to your bones, what does it do? It dries them up. The scripture clearly speaks of the drying of bones. And bones dry when you are around a funny spirit. When the spirit is breached because of negative words around you. Have you been around people who are so negative that it even starts to annoy you? Why are you saying yes? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There are people who are just too negative. So when the Bible speaks of the words that dry up the bones, that's why you realize it. I one time I said it many years ago. People who are quarrelsome have bad bones. You notice. Those old people who are always quarreling. You notice. They all have bone issues. If they don't have arthritis, it's a back problem. It's not. You watch people who are quarrelsome. Some of you now you're remembering. <laughs> Proverbs 17:22. Read it. Oh. Proverbs 17:22. A merry what? That's what. A good medicine, but a broken spirit. What does it do? It dries up the bones. It just dries them up. It's wounded. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's wounded. It's wounded. Then it gets you back to the report. And it tells you that a good report gives the bonds fatness. But it says, by the what? <laughs> a bad report. What's the purpose of a bad report? It dries up the bones. So you realize that many of the words you speak are the things which kill your spirit. The, the words you speak when you're struggling, when you're in in trouble, when you're going through turmoil, when you're going through pain, when you're going through persecutions, the words that you speak are the things that start to dry you up. Those are the things that kill you. But if you learn to speak a certain way amid this trial, <laughs> if you learn to control your spirit and refuse to accept certain things and still speak the right words, that good report makes the what? The bones fat. Your bones become fat. He says that the light of the what? Of the eyes what? Rejoices the heart. That's the word of the spirit. It brings joy to your heart. And the Bible says, and a good report make up the bones fat. You remember in Acts, that lame guy at the temple called Beautiful? I think it's chapter 3. He says, but a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. And what happens? Who's seeing Peter, the Bible says, and John about to go into the temple, ask for alms. And Peter, fastening his, you know, this was a man of the light. He fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. He said, so light comes out of this guy's spirit. And the Bible says that a man looks on the man. Give, give me the Amplified. The Amplified says it well. He says, hey, yeah. Peter directed his gaze intently at him. 
Why? Because he carried a certain light within his spirit. And so did John and said, look at us. When the man looked at them, the next verse says, he gave heed unto them exceeding to receive something good of them. And while they were, he, he was looking at this guy, there was a light coming out of his eyes. There was a light coming out of his eyes. There was a light coming out of his eyes. And Peter said, silver and gold have I not. But such as I have. What did he have? Light. He says, I give thee. And that light is the gospel. He sent the word to that lame guy. And the good report made the bones work. <laughs> and the Bible says, yeah. And the man walked. He literally walked. He literally walked. He literally walked. Why? Because out of this man was a light flowing out of his spirit. And when he gazed at him intently, that's why you can heal a man by looking at him. If you understand this, oh yeah, yeah, baka, yeah. You can look at a human, it disappears. Why? Because your eyes flooded with light. And that is the light of the gospel. And that light which makes your heart rejoice, it makes another heart rejoice too. Let's go back, let's go back. In the story, I need to show you something. His eyes, his what? Go back. Uh-uh, next verse, four. He says, now, I went to the kitchen. He says, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, Say, look on us. Now, there's something I needed to show you, or something I actually saw when I was reading that scripture. I had realized that there was a reason why his eyes were not on this man, even though he was begging. He was not talking about physical, physical eyes. Because by the time a man is begging, he's seeing you. I don't know whether you see what I'm saying. By the time a man is begging, he's what? He's seeing you. But when he says, look on us, it meant go deeper than just looking at us with his physical eye. Receive something from our spirit by the light that comes out of us. Wow, I said, my God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The, of course, by the time you're begging, you're seeing people. They are passing you. You're seeing them. But when you get to a situation where you, you're telling a man, look on us, it means it's more than just you looking at me. No. Get to a certain level where you understand what I want to release in your spirit. And that's exactly where he got. And this man gave him light. He simply gave him light. He simply gave him light. Why? Because the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. What does the message call it? Let's see. I think it will make sense. Amplify. You may amplify. He says, ah, thank you. The light, now let's go back to acting. Leave there. But aren't you now to think of the Acts book? He says, In the light in the eyes of him whose heart is joyful, huh, rejoices the hearts of others. And good news. <laughs> now is the bonds. Are you seeing the picture? This man came with a happy heart because of the gospel. <laughs> and then he tells the man, Look on us. I'm the light in him. <laughs> Set the other heart on fire. And the bones became fat. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Are you seeing what I'm saying? Are you seeing what I'm saying? The set of that particular heart, the man's heart, the place of that man's heart, the place of Peter and John, the, where they were at, at, the angle they were at, they had the ability to release the light of a joyful spirit. Because it has been kindled by the gospel. That's why the gospel is called good news. Are you hearing me? When you read the Bible and you feel it in your spirit, you're, you're storing up something in you. And one day you will get upon a situation and it will smile with you too. <laughs> and the bones will become fat. The miracle will happen that same way. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. What I say is Isaiah 61. I don't think you that. Verse 1. Give me the version. Isaiah 61 message. Let's read verse 1. He says, The Spirit of God. This, this is something you all read usually in KJV. But I, when I read in the message, it blessed my spirit. He says, The Spirit of God, the Master, is on me because He has what? Anointed me. And what has He done? 
He sent me. By the way, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut this a bit short for a second. I love that the Bible says the Spirit of God is on me because He has anointed me. It's not the Spirit of God has anointed me, therefore He's on me. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. It's, he says the Spirit of the Lord, the Master, is on me because God anointed me. When you understand that, okay, let me talk to them which are mature. The Spirit of God is on me because God anointed me. So, why should the Spirit stay with me? Why should the Spirit be on me? Because I'm anointed. Because I'm anointed. And the anointing is a finished work. You understand? That means that the Spirit of God does not have a choice to be on you. He doesn't say, some people say, if you don't go with me. That was, <laughs> new creatures can't say that nonsense. The giftings and callings of God are without repentance. God does not withhold from whosoever he giveth. There is not going to be a certain day. Amplify it. There is not going to be. Amplify it. Give me amplify it. He says, for God's gifts and his calls are irrevocable. He never withdraws them once he has given. And he does not change his mind about those whom he gives his grace. Or to whom he sends his call. The what is on me will not leave me. That is why the spirit of God is upon me. <laughs> I wish I talked to some mature people. I wish the mature understand what I'm saying. That is why the Spirit has to operate on me. That's why I must demonstrate. That's why I must heal the sick. That's why I must walk in the Spirit. Because He has anointed me. I don't get in a meeting to say, God anoint me for the meeting. He has anointed me. I tell Him, thank you because your Holy Ghost is going with me. Because you have anointed me. I don't know whether I'm speaking to somebody. Somebody get this. When you understand that, you realize there is not going to be a day you can't demonstrate power. There is never going to be a day you cannot demonstrate power once you understand that. Let me say it again. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He... Has, now when you read the literal life, therefore, on me, is He attends to me because God has anointed. When He looks at the anointed of God, He has to attend to them. Whenever the Holy Ghost sees the anointed one, he avails himself to avail himself. What can I do? What can I do? See how the Holy Ghost, see how the Holy Spirit related with God. He would say, let there be, and the Holy Spirit runs. You see, because it's not, because this is the anointed one speaking. I don't know if I'm making you understand this. This is the anointed one speaking. When he says, be healed. The Spirit runs to execute. So, the Spirit is upon you because He has anointed you. You're not going to be anointed for you to be available for a certain someone. No, He has anointed you. So when the someone comes, the Spirit is on you. His eyes are literally watching. What do you want? What can we do? How do you want it to be? You see, why? Because He's the, when you understand that the Holy Spirit honors the anointed, you'll understand how to serve your occasion. You'll understand it. You might not make sense, but in the spirit realm, you'll make more sense. You'll make more sense. But anyway, he says, let's, let's, let's finish our time. He says, the Spirit of the Lord has what? Anointed me. Message. Aha. Uh -huh. He sent me to preach good news to the what? To the poor, not to just give them money. <laughs> Ooh. To preach good news to the poor. Heal the what? The brokenhearted. And now freedom to all captives. Pardon all prisoners. I love the next verse. God sent me to what? To what? To announce the hour of his what? Grace. A what? A sorrow. No, a celebration of God's destruction <laughs> Woo! of our enemies and comfort to all who mourn. Me, that's what God sent me to do. He didn't tell, send me to tell you how your enemies destroy you. No. 
The gospel of grace is a celebration of God's destruction of our enemies. That's why they call the gospel of grace. It, it is that constant celebration of knowing that everything happening in your life is already destroyed. He has been defeated. And then you have a celebration. In other words, nothing can befall you even next week that has not been under the bracket of distracted enemies and expected celebration. Everything you enter into, understand from day one that that one was already defeated. Celebrate. Hey, celebrate. Celebrate. Force yourself to be happy. So, in this situation, some of you, oh my God, what am I going to do? No, 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 no. no. You start clapping your hands. Me, I don't know how many times, eh? I've been alone and I have to force myself and I celebrate and I dance for myself. And me, this the hardest period. I just learn to celebrate. I just learn to just... Man, there is power when you understand that. Eh? Those places of being broke those days, now you're happy. Now you're broke, now you're happy. You're happy. <laughs> They don't have a coin in your pocket. Nanga, you're happy. You're happy. Whether I have money or I don't, that doesn't take away my joy. Whether you smile or you didn't, whether electricity is on or off. Afri- Ugandans now, even electricity can make them say, Can you believe for further day? Electricity. Jesus, they didn't have a current, they didn't have floodlights. Anyway, he says, and to comfort all who mourn. Next verse. He says, to care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion. To give them banquets of roses instead of ashes. Messages of what? Messages of what? And, and the other had a guy say, for them they just preach happiness. See, they just tell people good things only. What were we sent to do? <laughs> They don't tell people that the hell is real. We know it, but it's not our story. It's not in our hearts. So the Bible says to give them messages of joy instead of news of what? Doom. A praising heart instead of a languid spirit. Rename them oaks of righteousness planted by God to display His glory. Next verse. They will what? Because of that, what will they do? They will rebuild the old ruin, raise a new city out of the wreckage, Uganda. They will start over on the renewed, renewed, ruined cities and take the rubble left behind and make it what? New. You will hire what? Outsiders to herd your flocks and foreigners to work your fields. But you will have the title, priests of God, honored, honored, honored. As ministers of our God, you'll fish on the bounty of the nations. Let me repeat it. You will fish on the bounty of nations. You'll bask in their glory because you got a double dose of trouble and more than yourself got it. You'll inherit in the land you'll be doubled and your joy will go on forever. Next verse. Next verse. Because I, God, love fair dealings. And hate thievery and crime. I will pay your wages on time. And in what? Food. And establish my eternal covenant with you. Next verse. Your descendants will become well known all over. Your children in foreign countries will be recognized at once. They will say, yeah, isn't this a post of resistance? And start to speak something in the atmosphere. Get to your feet. Speak something in the atmosphere. Come on, say something crazy. For your children. For your descendants. The Bible says that they will be recognized as the people I have
that your heart is lighted today and joy joy engulfs your heart and your bones are made fat today your bones of finances your bones of relationships your bones of ministry whatever aspect in the name of Jesus Christ even in situations where it looks like it's impossible to the eyes of men we decree and we declare that with God all things are possible. They are possible. They are possible. If you're sick, receive your healing now. If you're bound, you're free. However big the situation is, your spirit is still stronger. And it sustains it. It kills it now. Start to frustrate everything around you by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Everything around you will start to change. In the name of Jesus. There is nothing stronger than your spirit in your personal life. There is no weakness stronger. There is no disease stronger. There is no opinion of man stronger. There is no thought of man stronger. There is no judgment of man stronger. There is no blackmail stronger. There is no gossip stronger. There is no hatred stronger. There is no malice stronger. Nothing is stronger than what is in the inside of you. Paul says we have this treasure in nothing vessels. That the excellence, glory, might be of the Lord. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come and give your life to Christ. I want you to walk here. 
and said today I want to be born again. Put up your hand, come. Say today I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Come. If you're there and you say today I want to be born again, today, not tomorrow, not next week. Now, come. Come. Give us a minute. Come. If you're saying I want to be born again today, wherever you are, come. 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 Whether you're in the overflow, you're up or down, come. Stand up. Come. 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 Ask your neighbor, are you born again? If they're not, bring them. Stand up. Come. If you sit down to receive the Lord as my personal Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? You say, I'm not born again. I want to be born again today. Where are you? I feel there are some two people. There are some other people. Don't you feel it also? Even you feel it. I feel there are some other people. Come, wherever you are, come. Salvation has come to your house. you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.